Hello, beautiful people. This is Cindy Pressgrace with Real Estate Divorce Single Parent. And today I'm going to be talking about gratitude. The past couple of weeks, I, it's been a little bit crazy. Um, I haven't, there's been so many things that there have been going on. And on Tuesday, it was like a particular day that actually happened. And I'm telling you, this is like, I would say I'm very, very grateful for all of this just because it's a very particular story. So I have a friend, she, her name is Jessie, and I love her to death. Like, so our relationship started as a friend back it last year. And I think it was a little bit before that. I think it was like uh, back December last 2000, 2019, probably 2019. I think it was last year, actually. So we started working out and it was like 530 in the morning. And it was like every day, Monday through Friday. And I loved working out with her. And what I'm going to say, it's going to be a little bit appropriate. And, you know, I, I, you know, when I open myself to someone, it's just like, you know, for me to like, I can smile, giggles and all that. But for me to actually open to someone like, hey, you know, it actually takes a little bit of time and I'm a little bit goofy. And, you know, I can say a little bit of pain of butt to deal with sometimes. <laughs> Believe me, if you want to be embarrassed, have fun or be like, oh, my gosh, why did I do this? Just give me a call and I'll be your friend. But it's uh, it's funny because I sent her this particular text and it was like, I think that time we started working out like at we were working out at 530 in the morning and we had exchanged numbers and I sent her this particular text that she has not forgotten at all. She still keeps on mentioning it. And that actually is what started our beautiful relationship. I hope you guys don't get offended by what I'm going to say. Uh, so I texted her. If I only, if I only love to work out as much as I love Dick, I would be happy. I would love to work out every day. But you know what? And, you know, sometimes at 530 in the morning, it gets a little bit like, oh, do I need to actually work out? I really don't want to work out now. And, you know, and sometimes it's exhausting, especially like with everything going on. Sometimes I go to bed late and all that. And you know what? We all have those days of I want to go. I don't want to do this right now, but we got to make change our mindset. Right. We got to be always in that like, hey, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. That's really important for me completely. And that was the whole thing. That's what started our relationship. She was always like my motivator. She's always had like this positive mindset and she's strong. She's beautiful. I mean, I've always considered her beautiful. I mean, inside, outside completely. And we became really good friends. So at the end of the year, uh, well, beginning of the year, January 1st. Um, so something tragic happened to her. And she was in the hospital for 26 days and she actually lost both her eyes. And I don't want to go into details or anything just because it's a little bit um, traumatic. But so, I mean, and still, you know, after this whole situation happened, she had three little ones. And I, I still think the world of her, believe me, she's amazing. I mean, she is such like, wow. I mean, she's like a very, very bright star. And so a few months later, like, this is like a couple of weeks ago, probably like a month ago, she's like, Hey, you know what? Um, I did mention she lost her eyes, right? She's like, Hey, you know what? I've been, I, I think I asked her like, Hey, you know what? When are you getting your eyes or when are you going to go to the doctor? And she's like, well, you know, I'm like, there's three people. I'm like, I'll take you. And so I Googled, I, this is what you're going to have to listen to. I Googled. The, like three, three, um, I, I people. Okay. I'm like, okay. So I found in John's Creek, she's like, Hey, you know, I find a, I'm like, okay, John's Creek, right. All right. I think this is the one they have an office in Atlanta and they have one in John's Creek. I think this is the one. Okay. So I did that. So we went to the appointment and I made the appointment like, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So when we walk into the doctor's office, I'm like, okay, so you're going to get your eyes fitted. It's going to be awesome. And and that whole thing was like, okay, so, okay, this is awesome. So I have no idea. Like we both are like so new to this. I've been learning so many things about, um, I cannot pronounce the word. So I'm just going to mention fake eyes. Um, prothe and I'll, 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 I'll try to say prothesis, prothesis, 
Pro- prosthetics. Pro- okay, so now I understand why I cannot pronounce it. Okay, so we went to the doctor's office. The doctor and I, I'm like, okay, so I, the first thing I, I, I said to, to, to the nurse, I'm like, okay, so I'm lost. I mean, are we in the right place? She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, so how does this work? I mean, how, when does she get her eyes and all that? And she's like, the nurse like looks at me like confused. And when the doctor came in, he was more confused than we were, <laughs> but it, it was actually an amazing, an amazing thing. So with this, we went to we talked for a little bit and he's like, look, you know what? I do the same thing as the other doctor does. And we're like, but aren't you the best doctor for like getting the eyes or how does this work? It's just like, you go to, we go to you and then we get to the guy that actually does the, the, um, the eyes and all that. And this is, and I was like, okay, so how does this really work? And in this case, we were like, okay, so how do we, how, how, like, I, I don't understand how, like, so I was a little bit lost. She was a little bit lost, but he's like, look, when I'm talking about customer service, this is where customer service comes in along. Jesse has her own doctor. We were not looking at, you know, I, I honestly made, I honestly made a mistake because I, I, I didn't know, you know, I was trying to help, but I was like, so does this, um, but you know what? So this doctor, I mean, I can say he is the best doctor in like, I mean, I I haven't seen, well, I've talked to a few eye doctors and all that. He's an ophthalmologist, um, the one that does eye surgery and he is amazing. So how does this relate into real estate, into customer service and all that? I'm going to get there into a little bit. So we started talking, we continued talking completely and we went ahead and, Hey, you got to go. I'm on Julian out, out. Sorry. Okay. So in this case, he was most likely more caring about her well being, about like what her situation was like, okay, so how do we, how can we get her in? And it was like the caring and thoughtfulness about behind it because you know, what if there was nothing else in there for him? Or what if she didn't chose him? And I did ask a lot of questions too. Cause I mean, honestly, like, like, like I said, you know, she is my friend and I love her to death. You know, she is an amazing person and, and I do care about her, you know, and I want the best for her too. So in this case, he, uh, he mentioned about like the importance of having his, their own practice. Yes. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't work with, um, like emergency traumas anymore, but he's seen a bunch of them when he worked at the ER and he has a lot of experience, but it was like, once we, once he walked in, it was like, he was not no cold hearted or anything, nothing at all. And I remember a few months ago, this is back, probably like back in July or June, I started talking to this ophthalmologist and he has his own practice too. And I, I started talking to him about about my friend and he gave me like the cold shoulder completely so going into this office with this experienced doctor you know she he actually put her in front so he showed me he showed me a an eye and I was like okay that is pretty awesome so I don't know if you guys have seen and this is gonna sound awful what I'm gonna say okay remember Harry Potter the guy that has like the the fake eye so, okay, that eye was horrible, but this one, you can't even tell that is actually, it's, it's not real. It is like, wow. So anyways, so the whole thing is that, um, Dr. Balin calls the ocularis in Atlanta. Uh, yes, in Atlanta. So, and I'm going to mention it because I am like really, really grateful and appreciative. And if you guys ever know of anybody that has lost an eye or do not know the process about this, it is really, really important to know what eye surgeon you're going to get a hold of. It is really important to know the process. Um, and I, like I said, I've learned a lot during this process completely. And I've, re- I've, I've been researching, I've been asking questions. So Anything that has to do with prosthetics, um, 
See, I, I think I pronounced it correctly, right? Um, it is really important to just see how soon you need to get into, like if you need a, a, a fake leg or a fake arm or, you know, anything that is adjusted to your body is really important. Um, so let me just continue the process. And so anyways, Dr. Balin calls his ocularist. And yes, an ocularist is someone that actually does the fake eye. So yes, that is an ocularist. By the way, ophthalmologist is the one that operates. Ophthalmologist? Okay, I think, no, wait, not. A, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to research now. Okay, so um, let me see here. I think, I think I'm right, right? All right, so ophthalmologist. Uh, Eye surgeon. Who's an eye eye surgeon? Surgeon. I'm gonna have to research that now. So in this case, okay. So oc ocular surgery performed. Ophthalmologist. Okay, I I was right. I, I was right. So the person that um typically that does um, an eye surgery is an ophthalmologist. So keep that in mind. Always read your reviews and make sure that your your eye doctor is actually very caring about yourself. And you know, just ask questions. All the questions. There's no stupid. No, there's no stupid question ever. But in this case, um, so we talked to Dr. Balin, and honestly, his care and his above and beyond with his ocularis was amazing. Dr. Balin personally called the ocularist in Atlanta. All right, so after I met this ocularist, so, all right, so now day of, um, I remember I, I we were walking out the door and I told like, Jesse, don't worry about it. They're gonna get you before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving because, you know, you're a special case. And, uh, and, you know, the first day we call, well, you know what, you're going to be there for the 22nd. I'm like, no, we got to see, we got to see this guy, Tony. Um, no, uh, no other people than Tony. He is the one that you need to see. That's it. I mean, if we have to wait, we'll wait. Okay. So 22nd, hey, you know what? I, I can't because I'm going to be out of town. Now she calls me Friday. Hey, um, do you think uh, Tuesday you'll be able to take me to Atlanta? I'm like, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take you to Atlanta. When do we have to be there? 10 o'clock? Okay, not a problem. I'll pick you up. Okay, so Tuesday happens. So I'm like, okay, Jesse, we're going to walk through the door and all that. We walk through the door. I'm like, are we in the right place? So this is kind of like you walk through the door, first door, second door. There's no receptionist like in a doctor's office. And then he's like, hey, I'm like, uh, hi, I think I don't know where I am, but is this the right place? I think we have an... Is this the right place that we have an appointment in? Uh, yeah, you do. So who are you? <laughs> so me and my little personality sometimes. Um, so he's like, coming in, coming in. So the the like from the very start, it was like, wow, he is like really cool. And I'm like, so are you? So when is she like? When is she getting her eyes and all that? And he's like, no, you're gonna get them today. I'm like, what? Like today? Yeah, today. I'm like, what? So I was a little bit lost about that. And I and he said, Oh, you'll be here. Just prepared to be here five or six hours. I'm like, oh yeah, whatever, you know. Like, yeah, you know, you know, sometimes you say things jokingly and look like, oh, does he really mean this or not? And no, effectively, we were there from 10 o'clock in the morning till almost six o'clock. Okay, people, you're like, why are you telling us this? His birthday. It was his freaking birthday. Okay, this man travels all over the place. He has different places in California. He has um, California, don't remember where else. I know he has two offices here in Atlanta. And I'm like, wow. And he has a wife and two little kids. And he's like, you know what? Um, Dr. Balin personally called me because, and, because I needed to take care of this. And I was like, what? Dr. Balin called you? And Jesse was the same thing, same thing too. Like, what? And I I I I looked at him. I, Jesse looked well, Jesse looked at me, and I was like, 
we still couldn't like comprehend what was really going on really because I mean we thought that she would get her eyes like six to eight weeks oh no this was not no this is not what happened she actually got her eyes the same day so I saw the whole process of making fake eyes and like I said no disrespect for that uh pro prophecies prophesis pro prophetics okay anyways this is why I cannot pronounce that word but anyways so so she got like I saw like, oh no, you know, are we going to go get the impressions and all that? And I was like, so do we have to go somewhere else? No, 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 no. He made it all right there. Completely, completely. And I was like, in odd, I was like, wow. I mean, and you know, it was like from the very first start, like the mold, um, he had like little irises around that he already pre-made. He makes these from scratch. But the most awesome thing is that out. Uh, the most awesome thing is that he has has had that gun like. What do you need help with? Give me a second. So sorry, my kids are. They had a short day today, or late start, and anyways. So this is the whole thing. And um, so he had these little, like the irises, the molds and all that, and like the texture, the volume, all of it. He actually, he is so detailed. So comparing like from previous eyes to eyes now, I apologize for the screen behind it. But, you know, single, single, no, real estate divorce, single parent, right? It's me and the kids. Okay, so it was the whole detail that he put into this. And he had been learning like from generation to generation to generation. So this actually started like 200 years ago with his family. And he had like these little cast iron molds that he actually makes eyes from. And it is like amazing because it's, it's really like really interesting. And I'm like, wow, like this is like so cool. I'll probably post some videos on on YouTube later on, or I'll probably integrate some of this in here, but just take a look at like the, like the whole thing. It is like the shape, the quality it's acrylic. He does acrylic. And it's like, I say like, he's a Picasso of ocularity because the detail, if you would have compared the, the eyes of the previous ocularist to now, there's no way you can compare quality because the so every like every artist I don't know if you know this but every artist has its own like quality and you know like detail and they have their signature so this other ocularist he had like if you look at eyes and you have like the round like the white that means it's a healthy eye right but when you start like seeing gray and that's a signature of the old ocularist was that he had this grayish signature around the eye and it was it was not attractive at all but I say things happen for a reason if if I would have not made that phone call made that appointment and walked through the office the first time you know Jesse probably would have gotten this other ocularist you know the one that he because he actually just retired which is a good thing <laughs> but um but that's the thing sometimes in life we think that, you know, that mistakes are like, oh, you know what? I did this mistake. I feel awful and all that. And yeah, I, I feel awful because I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's money, it's, it's insurance and all that. And you're like, okay, so why did I make this mistake? But take away from that mistake that you have done. Where is it going to take you tomorrow, today and tomorrow? You know, think about that this different mindset that it's going to take you to. Everything happens for a reason. And sometimes we say, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't have that mentality. I cannot see that. Put yourself in a different mindset. Change that perspective. That is what you have to do. And be grateful for the smallest things because those are the ones that are going to take you so far away in life, like very, very far. And that's what's going to help you. If we are always in that mentality, oh, I can't do this. I cannot do that. But, you know, if we go ahead and 
treat people like we want to be treated. Like, I honestly, like, I never thought this would like, so I have a very goofy personality and yes, you know, I sometimes say inappropriate stuff, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, I, I, I am, um, I am not denying that, <laughs> but um, it's all about how you treat people, how you definitely treat people. So I could have had like, when I walked into Dr. Balin's office with Jesse, I could have had like a nasty personality. No, I mean, I'm, I'm confused. You know, I want the best. And, you know, I'm worried about her, you know, it, that basically uh, that, you know, but the whole thing about how important it is to treat people, because when you treat people right, they'll, they will go the extra mile above and beyond for you. You know, think about this. If you, if I would have gone in a totally different aspect and be like, you know what, forget about that person. But, you know, attitude changes people. The way you treat them, change them changes people. So there's so many things that you can actually grow and improve. And it's just like, but hey, you know what? You also have to work on it yourself because if you don't work on it, hey, uh, it'd be like, hey, it's there. It's right here. It's right here. It's right here. But it doesn't do anything. And sometimes in life, we're given opportunities. Is it going to come once? Is it going to come twice? We don't know. But are you going to are you going to take it in the first time? And I'll probably say a little analogy about this. Um, so yesterday, my son has been having a little bit of a tantrum lately um, in the morning. And I told him, because I've been trying to get them to think in a positive way, opportunities and being grateful. Uh, and yesterday I told him, okay, so, oh, and when you're going to rub your eyes, you cannot do this. You have to rub from outside to inside. Yep. Like that, by the way, you don't want to, uh, from outside, from, from inside to outside, it doesn't work. It has to be from inside, from outside to inside. Yep. That's how you clean your eyes now. And you have to wink more than 60 times. Not blink, it's wink. So those are some things I learned. Okay. But anyways, going back to my son. Um, so in, with my son, he's been very ungrateful. And so I've been making them cinnamon rolls every morning. And I told him yesterday, I made like 24 cinnamon rolls. And so I gave him cinnamon rolls and he's like, I don't want them. He's like, but you, you don't love me. You don't love me. I'm like, okay, so I'm giving you cinnamon rolls. So let's, let's put this an example. Opportunities in life. I'm putting cinnamon rolls in your face and you're telling me you don't want them but you want the cinnamon rolls right but you don't want to take it how close am I going to put them to your face am I going to have to feed them to you are you going to take it or not and he's like no I don't want it so when these cinnamon rolls are gone do you think those cinnamon rolls are going to come back and I put it as an analogy like that because sometimes in life we have opportunities and we don't take them because either of pride, because we're afraid, or because, you know what, we have a nasty attitude. We're like, oh, we're not doing that. But if you change your perspective in life and you change your mindset, things will change gratefully for you. It's like a, so I'm, I'm reading, it's like, you got to be grateful for the little things, little things, big things, anything. And it is so amazing the way of giving gratitude. You know, and this is where I'm coming from. I, I'm so grateful. I'm so blessed. I am so happy. And I'm so joyful for my friend that she got her eyes, you know, and the power of prayer, the power of law of attraction, you reap what you sow. The way you treat people is the way that you're going to be treated. And that goes in any type of business. It doesn't matter what it is life. I mean, it, any, any place in life. So the more grateful you are, the more you're going to receive. And sometimes we got that negative mindset and say, mm, you know what? I don't want to do that. I know, no, 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 no. I don't No, 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 no. Because of this and that. Okay. So I've been actually following, um, I've been reading this book called the magic and it's a really, really good book. And I'm doing the 28 days of gratitude. And today, 
Um, it is words, works like magic. So it works like magic. And that's really, really important because we're talking about whoever has gratitude will be giving more and he or she will have an abundance. Whoever does not have gratitude, even what he or she has will be taken from him or her. You know, it is amazing when we are clear on the things we want and the things we're, we're grateful for. And, you know, our, our things start changing our surroundings. You know, if we complain, one complaint kills 10 blessings. But if we bless everything that we go through, it doesn't matter if it's bad or good. It's about being grateful. And, you know, miracles do happen. People do change perspectives, mindset, but it's all with you. It all starts within you. So with this whole thing about my friend, Jessie, I'm so freaking grateful and I'm so freaking blessed that she got her eyes. She looks amazing, you know, and we still have a couple of doctor's appointments and all that, but you know what? Sometimes we don't have to put everything. We don't, you know, going the extra mile is what actually helps us. You know, I have, I have a client, um, that I've been working with them for over a year. Yes. In real estate, we do work with clients over a year. I mean, I've had clients that I've been working with three, for three years too. But I mean, it's, it's about providing them the best service and, you know, just helping them out. That's what matters. And in this case, I had this client like, Hey, you know what? Um, this particular builder, I keep on saying that it's Black Friday and on steroids for home sales. And they release lots and all that. And I, I kid you not. So this past weekend, I uh, so last weekend, we found out that she lost her lot. And it was because there was a leak there, blah, blah, blah. Meaning that somebody else had sold it before it was released. And anyways, so she was upset. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I told her, look, I don't ever drop the ball. This is not me. I don't know what the heck happened. I already talked to the sales, um, to the sales manager. Let me see what I can do. I am going to set my phone the days that they release the lots, Wednesdays, Saturday, and Sunday. And I will go ahead and I just send my alarm, Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday at 5.30, at 9 o'clock. I think it was like probably like two, noon, 2, and then 3, and then at 5. And then I would send him like, so it was more than three times. And I was sending him video text messages and video emails because I told him, look, I want my clients to get a house. They have to like, I don't want her to continue stressing about this completely. And, you know, I have a really good relationship with, um, you know, sales agents and builder agents and all that. I mean, and this is a particular one that is very, very different. And when I talked to, to him, like I, I, I emailed him on Wednesday, then I emailed him on Friday and I did that like several times. And I emailed him on, on Saturday morning and he's like, no, we're not going to release any loss today or anything. So on Sunday, my client texts me like, hey, we're here in the parking lot. I'm like, give me just a little bit. Let me let me text him. So I video texted him and I texted him and I said, hey, you know what? My clients are in the parking lot. Are you doing any release today? Okay. Not even five minutes later. I kid you not. I kid you not. Lots of release. I'm like, get in there now. She like, she, I think she did a sprint in there and all that. She was like, okay. And she got the house. We got under contract. And I was like, wow, that is amazing. You know, a little grain of salt, a little grain of sugar can go such a long ways or a drop of honey, you know, and that's so important because that's showing that you really care for people. And it doesn't matter if you're in real estate or in what, like you already saw this, like this customer service that, you know, caring for a patient is so important. And usually doctors are arrogant, especially male doctors, but uh, <laughs> no offense to anybody if you're a doctor, so forth. But I mean, they don't listen. They don't sit down to care. 
but that is the importance of that. You know, I will go, you know, I will refer, and I, this is what I told the ocularist. I mean, I'm like, look, I will refer you business. If I know of anybody that is actually missing an eye, then I will definitely refer them to you because, you know, that is something that you want, you, you're you ready, um, you know, I already built a relationship with that guy that, you know, and I, I know how he works. I know what his, what his business is about. And the quality too, the quality, it is so important. So I'm really, really happy for my friend, Jesse. I am so grateful and I'm so blessed that this all happened. And you know what? It happened before Thanksgiving. So she'll be able to take pictures with her kids and she has her eyes. So I'm so freaking grateful. And this is why I'm saying, you know, it's been a little bit crazy of, of weeks for me. It's been, you know, and I'm trying to keep up with my podcast. But start your start your day with gratitude and you'll see that things will change. You'll be happier. You'll start attracting things that you didn't even think that was going to happen, you know. And yeah, so this is Cindy Pressgrace. Oh, and before I go, I got to let you guys know, I actually released my book. So you guys have to read it. You guys have to buy a copy. It's called Becoming Successful in Real Estate, How I Sold My First 15 Million as a Single Parent. So if you're struggling, if you have questions, if you're not going through a down path or so forth, just feel free to read it. So again, this is Cindy Pressgrace with Real Estate Divorce Single Parent, and I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Enjoy!